Hello, we are Ben and Rebecca of His and Hers Vlogs. Full-time travelers in a 4x4 expedition vehicle, but at this time we are resting up at our home base in Seward, Alaska. Hope you're having a great day. There are things that we take very seriously in our household, and this is a very serious video because it's about what's in our RVing and overlanding first aid kits, and we're going to be sharing a handful of life-saving tips throughout the context of this video. Uh, but before we get started, you know, too much more, you can always go to our website, hisandhershub.com for more education, resources, and engagement. Uh, so there are things that we take very seriously in our household and in our travels. One of them is... Fishing. Yeah. <laughs> and the other is medicine. <laughs> And on that note, I do have to offer a disclaimer and take care of the logistics here. We are not in any way offering medical advice. We mm -hmm. are sharing with you what we carry in our kits. And it may be something that saves your life one day or someone that you come upon. But uh, no medical advice. We're just sharing what's in the kits. We got to get that out of the yep. way. Now we can move on. And for me, this is fun. <laughs> We travel to, through, and in some of the most remote locations on this planet, and we try to be prepared for as many medical emergencies as we can. Yeah. And we are firm believers in the My Medic First Aid Kits. Now, let me just clear the air real quick. These kits are not for boo-boos. It's not that plastic box that you get from uh, Walmart. These are life-saving kits. It's not just like aspirin and neosporin here, guys. And if you uh, look in the video description below, you will find a link to my medic and a 15% discount if you use our promo code. So make sure you uh, yeah, are prepared while you're on the road, but you can also save a few bucks. And on that note, I spent years looking for a company like my medic. That's why we share it with you guys, because unless you have this knowledge and skills to put a kit like this together, you don't know what needs to go into one. And that's what I love about it is that they have put together a kit that actually could make a difference in a roadside accident or when you're out in the back country or any time. And on that note, you might think that the first aid kits that come from my medic are maybe a little too advanced for you, but I want you to think maybe a little more multidimensional here on this. It's not just about the skills that you possess, mm -hmm. but also about the skills that anyone around you or who might come upon you um, would have. Or if you come upon an accident, somebody else that stopped for it as well, because medical people usually stop for accidents. You'd have this kit with you and it could mean the difference between life and death for someone. So... Yeah, you obviously noticed we put out a disclaimer at the beginning of this video, <laughs> but why should we listen to you, not me, <laughs> you? Well, basically I've been working in some capacity in emergency rooms since I was 18, and most recently in the remote ERs of Alaska as a PA. So- What's a PA? A physician assistant. So I have a master's degree. Mm -hmm. I do most of all the things that physicians do. I just have a different degree. And we have a great quality of life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't go to school until I was 33 years old. <laughs> Only 26. But um, yeah, anyway, so basically a lot of years of experience, a lot of years in ER medicine. It also even goes deeper because mom is an MD who pretty much only did emergency room. Yeah. And you went to medical school with mom and Dominica when you were a child. So you That's literally right. have been to medical school twice in some ways, so yeah. I passed anatomy with yep. flying colors at the age of 10. She's an authority on this. <laughs> All right, on first glance, it's probably gonna look to you like we have two kits, and you wouldn't be wrong, but I'm gonna explain to you the difference between the two here in a second. All right, so let's start with what I have deemed our grab and go bag. This is a bag from my medic. It is larger than the my FAK bag because even though we have a my FAK advanced, I ordered some extra things all a cart from my medic, as well as added a few things from my own kit, which you can find on Amazon. 
All right, I have emptied the entire contents of the My Medic bag out onto the table, but before we get into the products inside, I want to actually show you the bag. I love that it has so many compartments so I can organize everything, and you're gonna be really impressed with how much this little bag holds. All right, everything that was in that bag is now here on the table, and I'm going to go through all of it for you, starting with what you can get from My Medic, and then the things that I've added to the bag. So let's start with Airway first. They provide you with three different sizes of nasopharyngeal airways. They also provide you with four sizes of oral airways. So this helps if somebody kind of can't keep their airway clear, you can help open it up for them a little bit one way or the other. The next area is uh, wound care and broken bones and stuff like that. So you've got, this is really awesome, can be used instead of actually making like a splint for a broken bone. Uh, you use this and then wrap it up with some elastic bandage, uh, which comes in, both come. Uh, they also come with a couple kinds of tape. Really important, and one of the reasons I love my medic so much is it comes with multiple ways to control bleeding. So a tourniquet, which you really should only use if you're medically trained, but it also comes with some new advanced technologies that have resulted because of war in recent years. So combat gauze and another type of wound dressing, trauma wound dressing to stop the bleeding. Uh, they also have burn shield. The reason I really like this is it doesn't have silvadine in it, which is something we shouldn't use on burns anymore. It causes infection. Also comes with some iodine. Should not be used on anybody who has shellfish allergies. They're allergic to iodine. Some moleskin in case you get uh, blisters. And then a multi-trauma dressing. So you can put these things on and then cover up the wound with this so you keep it really nice and clean. All right, this is another thing you should not use in case, unless you are trained, but it is a hyphen vent and it is a three-sided bandage in case you have an open sucking chest wound. And seriously, like this can save somebody's life so easily. Also comes with some saline that you can flush eyes or flush wounds. You always need to be getting something clean and this is perfect. You know, you get a ton of it. Uh, so that's really nice to carry with you. Also comes with a sharps container in case you're taking care of somebody who needs insulin or epi. You can throw the needles in here and also if you would happen to use the pin blade, then you have a place to put your scalpel blade. Oh, I think we forgot this when we are talking about blood stopping bleeding, but another type of uh, coagulant that you can use to stop bleeding. Here's some more that they provide you so that you can take care of smaller wounds. This is actually some liquid skin. So if you're not good at suturing or don't know how, you can clean the wound really, really, really well and then use liquid skin and then cover it up with some kind of bandage. Next, there are all of these little bags that have great stuff in them. So there's some lube, extra lube, in case you need it for the Sorry. Benjamin. It's for the nose, not anything else, young man. There's also electrolyte fizz in here, which is great, but you can also carry some Gatorade. They have all kinds of little baggies of over-the-counter medicines and topicals. They also have another type of bleeding agent, a uh, hemostatic agent to stop small wounds from bleeding. And then they also have some smelling salts to rouse somebody if they've passed out. These are also two CPR shields that you can use, very basic ones uh, that come in the package. Thermometer and a pen light came. Uh, and there's something else in here. Oh, a little pair of uh, tweezers. Very handy always. Okay, that is what actually came from, oh, one more thing from my medic, a finger pulse oximeter. So you put this on someone and it will tell you what their heart rate is and how much their blood is being oxygenated. Really important um, if someone's really sick or injured.
Well, those are the things that came from my medic or in their kit. Uh, and then the things that I have added are as follows. A wilderness and travel medicine comprehensive guide, which you can get one of these online. I also carry my PALS and ACLS algorithms. And then just in case I'd have to have, have access to a 12 lead EKG, I can double check myself and see what the arrhythmias are. Um, I also got a big set of shears. These are actually available on my medic. A pen light is, this is my extra one. You saw that came in the kit as well. This is really important and you can easily buy a set of these on Amazon, but eye shields to protect you if you're taking care of somebody that's bleeding. I have my really nice Littmann stethoscope here. This is the one I've had for, since I started graduate school. Don't have to buy an expensive fancy one like this, but a stethoscope is really handy, handy especially if you're gonna be using a manual blood pressure cuff or you wanna to listen to someone's heart. Um, or lungs. You can also get a digital BP cuff and this goes on the wrist. It will give you blood pressure and pulse. I also carry a tape measure. Uh, there's often times when people are injured, especially if they have uh, injuries to their extremities, where you want to measure side to side and see if one side's bigger than the other. Really handy to carry with you. Again, this is something I have from my medicine days, but an ophthalmoscope and, sorry, an ophthalmoscope and an otoscope. <laughs> so you can look in the eyes and the ears. Something you really only need to do if you're trained. And lastly, in case I want to do neuro exams, a tune a fork so that I can do a neuro check. All right, jump bag is all packed back up. I do want to point out that the way I go about packing this bag is to be able to get vital signs and take care of ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. So make sure they have an airway and that they're breathing and they're not bleeding to death and that I can find out what their vitals are with this bag. And then more important stuff to take care of later. Before we transition into our giant custom medical toolbox here, let's share one life-saving tip with you guys. If you're gonna be doing hardcore travel to remote places or even just slightly remote places, make sure everyone in your vehicle knows how to drive said vehicle and pack up camp. You do not wanna be the stereotypical situation where one person does all the driving and the other person does more of the kind of the housework stuff that driver gets a heart attack and you know any medical condition and the other person does not know how to get you to higher levels of care, you're a goner. So if you can reach the pedals and turn the steering wheel, you need to know how to drive the rig. Well, the medical toolbox is unpacked and before I share with you what's inside of it, I wanna talk a little bit more about this box. We chose it because it has 90 degree angles, which fits into the truck well. And we got the idea because the pharmacist I used to work with sent me out to the village with one of these whenever I traveled remotely in Alaska. <laughs> so I will preface this with sometimes I have large amounts of stuff that's excessive, like otoscope shields, but I carry them with me because I can, and I probably need some more in the five years around the world. But let's start by showing you kind of overall organization. You can see here that I have things labeled. So a Ziploc, large Ziploc bag for wounds, a large Ziploc bag for IV and O2, and, uh, and then all of my tapes and gauzes and things like that over here. So let's break it down. I do have an ice pack. I think this is great to be able to, you know, throw an ice, some ice in here. I think this one's also good for putting hot stuff in it so you can do hot or cold. Um, I always carry large and small Ziploc bags. You just never know when they're gonna be handy for keeping a wound dry or throwing things away so that blood doesn't get everywhere. Like I said, I have extra otoscope shields with me, just because I can. I also have an extra couple of thermometers, ones for little kids. I do have a little baggie with all kinds of things to administer oral medications with. 
this is very important. Now I have a whole kit to be able to do epinephrine, but what I carry in my purse is just an EpiPen. And if you have allergies, this is something you can probably already carry with you, uh, required to have a prescription. Um, so let's talk about the IV and oxygen. Now this again is something that you're probably not gonna be able to have with you. Um, but I just want to show you what I carry. I have a nasal cannula in case I have the ability to use oxygen. And then I have all of the stuff I need to start IVs. And we probably should carry more, but this is all that will really fit. So we do have one bag of fluids. Again, starting IVs and administering oxygen is something you need to be trained for, but you never know when someone might be carrying it with them. Now the wounds bag, I'm going to actually deconstruct and show you a little bit more about what I have in there. So I opened this up so you guys could see one, but this is a suture kit and everything that comes in it. Um, and you can actually get suturing material from my medic. Uh, these are different kinds of monofilament um, that you can use for suturing. It's suturing material. Fishing oh. line, honey. Yeah, exactly Mama that. Filament. Exactly that. I also have the stuff in there to numb up a wound. I have extra fishing line on board too if we need it. And and needles, right? I'm sure. We can, we can turn a hook. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Ben's ready in case we run out of all of the supplies I have there. I do have a little cautery pen, so if somebody's got some little bleeders, I can stop it. I carry Neosporin. And then... These are something you can carry, and it's fantastic, are Steri strips. And uh, anybody can use these. You just need a pair of tweezers, and then you can apply them to the wound and close it up, approximate the edges, and get somebody to a hospital where they can get some proper suturing. Needs to be within 18 hours, just in case you ever wanted to know that. I carry lots of different kinds of Band-Aids and alcohol swabs. <laughs> this is funny, but you'd be surprised how often people get foreign objects stuck in their ears. And this is stuff to be able to extract that or flush it out. Something else that you can purchase at Amazon, uh, sterile gloves. And these are really important if you're working with wounds to help prevent somebody from getting an infection. Something really easy to buy and carry with you that can make a big difference. And then the other stuff is just extras, more bandages and whatnot, and more of an ear kit. You know, doing this video today, it's really good for us because we're getting ready to hit the road again. And I realized going through this that uh, my stapler's gone, which is something really valuable to have with you in your kit. And it's been on my list for a long time to get an Ambu bag, which you can connect to a mask that you put over someone's mouth to do to give them oxygen if they're not breathing on their own. Anyway, continuing with what's in our box, Life Straw. My mom actually gave us these the first time and I ordered another one. We carry them in our bags, but then I also ordered one for this box. So you can just drink straight out of a stream and it's a multi-stage uh, filter so that you don't get sick. Really, really valuable to have because you get stuck out somewhere, the thing that's gonna kill you first is not having water. And if you've seen the show Lost, water fixes everything. That's right, you just put water on it and you're yeah. fine. Um, another thing that I think is really valuable for anyone to have, and these are even from my school days when I was still learning all of this stuff, but you can get these little cards, they're, they're actually multi-paged, and they will help you to identify the proper names of body parts. And if you're calling in and getting some help from somebody before they can get out to you, it doesn't hurt to be able to really describe well what you're dealing with so that they can give you better advice. I do have this bag of little insulin syringes from uh, Remington's time. We don't really have a purpose for them right now, but I keep them with because you never know what's gonna come up. And anything you have like that, that you've used in past instances, wouldn't hurt to carry with you. You just never know when you're gonna need them. So lastly in this box are all of my things for uh, fixing 
injured extremities. So I have a couple of different kinds of Curlex. This is great for if you cover up a wound and then you want to cover the gauze so that it won't fall off. This is, it sticks to itself, but it doesn't stick to your patient. And it's fantastic, it's called Curlex. It also works great for the dogs. Um, this is fantastic and it's on our Amazon store. It's called Kinesio Tape. Um, if you know how to use it and you can tape something up like an injury uh, to a shoulder or an ankle or a wrist or something like that, great to have on board with you. And somebody that you meet might know how to do it. More Curlex, uh, another kind of tape. And you can see I'm a little bit of a tape fiend. I have all kinds of tape. This is my favorite kind of tape. It's surgical tape and you can see some stuff sticks to it but this is the best kind of tape very few people have allergies to it that's what i prefer to use this is um, if you're going to be wrapping somebody's arm up uh, that they've broken it or something you can cover it with this and protect their skin from whatever else you put on top to splint it and lastly, I have some little tourniquets. These are great for starting IVs, but also if you could stop some bleeding if you had them with you. Again, tourniquets are something that you only use if you're trained to do it. And it's a last resort because you don't want to hurt somebody's extremities. Well, that's a wrap for our jump bag and our big old uh, medical supply toolbox. Yes. I'm um, going to still throw some very valuable information your way, but one suggestion would be the Wilderness First Aid course. You can find them around the country, and if you're going to be traveling in remote places, or heck, even urban hikes in the city, you it's knowledge. It is, and they cover a lot more than the typical stuff and from normal first aid and CPR. Very valuable. Uh, you're probably wondering a little bit about medicines. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but I will say something for fevers, something for pain, something for allergic reactions. If you're going to be traveling where you have questionable water supplies, something for traveler's diarrhea, and probably extra supplies of your prescription drugs. But you know yourself and what you need. But just be prepared and think Murphy's Law. Things are going to happen at the worst possible time and the worst possible place. That's right. So definitely visit mymedic.com. Check out all of their different first aid kits. I'm going to, in the description below, put a list of what we bought extra a la carte from them and also a link to our Amazon store where you can find the extra things for our first aid kit over there that are available for you to buy as well. But this is something so easy. You can purchase it today, get it in the mail to you, have it for your next outing, whether it's hiking or driving the car to grandma's for Thanksgiving or taking the next big road trip you have planned. It can really make a difference and save your life. That's why we shared yeah. this with you because it's so critically important. And we don't just talk about items for the sake of talking about them. There mm -hmm. has to be a deep personal meaning for us if we are actually going to be vouching for a brand. That's um, right. And My Medic is amazing. I love their concepts. Uh, now, holiday season is coming up and we have a promo code with My Medic that'll save you 15%. So it's his, hers, vlogs, 15, but that's all in the video description. Thanks for watching. Yeah, hope you enjoyed yeah. this. Maybe learned a few things and probably know a little bit more about us now. <laughs> We've been wanting to do this one for a while. We really have. And I just felt compelled this week to go ahead and get it done. And we killed two birds with one stone because we went through our medical boxes before we hit the road again. <laughs> now we know what extra supplies we need. Exactly. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. But we're getting back on the road soon. And we'll see you there. Bye.